like half the city's police force is already trying to figure out what we're up to. Tell me what you see out there. Do you see history in the making? Do you see change? I just can't think to myself that a thoughtful society would agree this is how we should treat people. When you don't find purpose and meaning in life, the only thing you look forward to is death. People started running into moving traffic. They're stopping any car that they can. Patrolling the Mediterranean, searching for migrant boats. We just arrived at the psychiatric hospital here in Queens. This is an ISIS flag the Peshmerga have taken down from a nearby position. We're in Estonia with the Estonian Defense League. They're about to go house to house right now. Uh, they've got search warrants and they're looking for gang members. Inside, a man is handcuffed. His tattoo is proof of his membership in the 18th Street Gang, otherwise known as Diaz y Ocho. The woman tells police that her boyfriend is just a mechanic, despite his massive gang tattoo. What is this man being charged with? Uh, 
آمدیم به مسجد کل شاگردان دیم جا خونالید بودن دیم جا کلشان و یک تبش شهادت رسید دیم جا و دیگرشان کلشان دیم جا شما میبینید که به کدام حالات شایستن بعضی مردمی گفا چیکد که یه گوازه را جور کرد که ایجا با ما را جور میکند با مسازا بودن و ای خوب برش ایو گوازه را امنیت ما مخیست ما نوگت من دیم دل یا درد وشون دی نمخ که دی پاسمان که دی تاری غاگو دی موتر غاگو دی سلاو غاگو چیو تیاری و ما مرگری او تن شهید شو دستان ور زخمه شو تا بندی چو شو ما لاس قطع شو بخمی زخمه شو چرا فکر میکنی که عمله کدن مکتب شما را کسی بود سلادار کسی بود طالب در مکتب بود نه ولی عمله وکرم تاس چی شکا و چی دیم خوران میخوی پزن کن از این مالو میشه که حکمت دیگه دست داره که اگر دست نداشت مدرسه ما هو شخصی نبود نه دیگه گوشه بود این در رسیت وزارت معرف کل مردم چی ایخ که هستن یا مساهی هم هستن هر مردم ایجا هستن از این پرسان که نمیتانه حکمت که ایجا کی بودن که اگر خودش آمده نمیتانه که نمیتانه این مردم همی علت شینیمی بوده که حکمت عمل امروز که به می دست مجاهدین رفتن بخاطر چی؟ ای کبر بود، ظلم بود که پرسان ازی را نکردن یوم و فرنان من حمامات و دوش و اگه همس جاو اللي هم متحدة جابو لهم و التنظيف و كذا و حدين كل هذا يا مسؤول عليهم يعتبرهم يقولوا لهم حل فيش اكتب انا عنديش اي كلام تاني اللي بقولوا لك When you guys left, one guy came and he asked us what we were saying. They started asking us why we were talking the truth. So everybody kept quiet. They did not say that I was the one talking, but they told us not to say anything. Everybody's, they can't say anything because they're scared. But I'm sacrificing my life for a change because I really need change. My family back at home need change. Everybody in here need change. We do not come here to eat or work. We don't want their electricity. We don't want their water. We don't want their food. We just want to go. If we're not going to get any help from anybody, we want to go to the sea. We're not, this is like death for us. We're not scared of death. We are Eritreans. Our main aim is to go to Europe. If we don't make it, we are okay with it because we'd rather die than to stay here. This is like, we're like dead people here. Run away to meet Luz. He's one of the only surviving cartoonists of the satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo that was the target of France's deadliest terror attack. It's been difficult to meet him because he's been under heightened police protection since he drew the cover for their latest issue featuring the Prophet Muhammad holding an I am Charlie sign that sparked protests across the Muslim world. He said his flat is now sniper proof so he could invite us over. Bonjour. Bonjour Yves. Bienvenue. Voilà. voilà à quoi ça ressemble à un appartement de dessinateur après un attentat. Beaucoup de bordel et puis des volets fermés. Aujourd'hui, c'est la première fois que je dessine quelque chose que je traîne dans la tête depuis longtemps. Ce moment assez bizarre où j'étais auditionné par un policier et où le mec me demandait à raconter ce que vous avez vu. Et moi, je lui répondais, est-ce que je peux prendre un papier et un crayon et je... Commencé à dessiner les bonhommes. On est des, des dizaines, des centaines, des milliers, des millions, peut-être un peu plus, euh, à être sidérés par la situation. On the 7th of January, the gunmen came in to your offices. How can you survive? J'ai, euh, comment dire, j'ai beaucoup de chance. C'est-à-dire que c'était mon anniversaire, le 7 janvier. Euh, et je suis resté longtemps au lit avec, euh, avec ma femme, euh, plus longtemps que prévu. Parce que c'était mon anniversaire, elle fait une bougie avec des, 
avec, euh, avec deux biscuits et puis un café, c'était super. Et euh, du coup, j'étais en retard à la réunion, tout bêtement. Et quand je suis arrivé euh, à Charlie, j'ai vu des gens qui m'ont interpellé et qui m'ont dit « il ne faut pas rentrer, il y a deux mecs euh, en armes qui viennent de rentrer dans, dans l'immeuble ». Et puis on essaie de comprendre ce qui se passe, on dit on ne peut pas rentrer, on sent qu'il y a quelque chose de, de bizarre, et puis tout d'un coup les premiers coups de feu commencent. Ah Moi je reste toujours curieux, je remonte, je remonte un peu la, la rue. Je vois les, mecs qui, les deux mecs qui sont en noir et qui commencent à, tirer, à diriger leur, leur, leur arme dans la rue dans laquelle j'étais, et ils ne savaient pas qui j'étais. J'attends un peu. Je remonte, je mets mon, mon machin, la porte s'ouvre, je monte les escaliers, et je commence à voir des taches de, de... pas des taches de sang, des traces de... de... de, de, de pas, en, en, enfin, ensanglantées. J'ai compris ça après, c'était les traces des sangs de mes amis. J'ai vu qu'il y avait des gens euh, à terre, des culs. J'ai vu... Euh, un copain, à terre, face contre terre. Un truc hyper euh, bizarre, c'est qu'on n'est on pas préparé à ça. On ne sait pas comment on réagira, on ne sait pas comment on ne saurait pas comment on ré réagir à ce genre de situation. Personne ne sait. Et, et à un moment donné, il y avait besoin de, de ceinture pour faire des garrots. Et moi, je me suis rendu compte que je n'avais pas de ceinture. Alors, je porte des ceintures maintenant. So we were just at the top of this alley. The police or the military there fired live rounds right around here. This guy just comes out with a handgun, runs up to the top of the alley and just starts firing literally just after we've had live rounds fired this way. But they claim they're uh, keeping hold of their own streets. This is a banner of uh, Kim Jong-un uh, that will be flying with the balloon fluttering in the background and hopefully uh, flying over Pyongyang with a rather insulting message about the dear leader and uh, the poster for the interview. Tying the bags to the balloons. Okay. The so these are the, these are the bags that we're gonna inflate. Once uh, okay. the balloons are inflated, they'll have okay. a special glue. It will melt through. Yeah. That's what releases these bags. In in their timed. Yeah. And for that, Mr. Park said it would take about three to five hours to. Make. There's dollar bills. There's cash in there. There's propaganda, and we also have thumb drives and copies of the interview. So this is the uh, GPS you're putting on? Yep. So this is a GPS receiver and a satellite transmitter. And so it'll get the GPS position and then send that up to a satellite, which will bounce it back down to a server on the internet. And so we'll then be able to see the position of the balloon as it moves along. So, so you put, how many of those are you putting in? Every, uh, every one? No, just one. If anyone is smoking, please stop smoking immediately. That would be greatly appreciated. Oh, 
So we have all five balloons uh, filled now. They've done this in a way that they know where they're going to go, and they know they're going north now. They just hope they get to civilization up north. Go, Henry Song. Yeah. Go, Yungo. Yeah. Go, Kim Jong Un. Free the North Korean people. Free the North Korean people. Down with the Kim regime. Down with the Kim regime. Free the North Korean people. Free the North Korean people. Down with Kim Jong Un. Down with Kim Jong Un. Okay. 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 I swear to God, if I fucking end up in Pyongyang, hanging on to this. They look like they've gone. They're sort of circling above. And they seem to be going in the wrong direction right now, by the way. This is the Akihabara neighborhood in central Tokyo, and it's ground zero for JK, which is what the Japanese call schoolgirl culture. Schoolgirls are actually a really big business in Japan. They sell everything, including cartoons, comic books, they pack music venues, they uh, advertise cafes and restaurants, but you may not have known that you can actually also buy the schoolgirls themselves. All right, well, we're gonna find out about JK culture in Japan. This is one of the JK bands. Hi, my name's Simon. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I guess this is an opportunity for all of the fanboys to get to know the band a little bit better. They can buy Polaroid pictures of them. They can meet them and speak with them. It's pretty innocent when it's just teenagers meeting teenagers, but yeah, that guy's a little bit older. আর আপু আপনাকে আমি একটু জিজ্ঞেস করব যে ওই রাতে আপনার যে কি হয়েছিল ওই বিষয় নিয়ে রাইত তো মানে ও রাইত রাইত গেছি অন্তনে পার্টনে আমি আইসা আমার মন্দর বিয়ার কিতে আইসা গাইতে ভেল কুমারি লো মারাবা দো তিন চার গো সয় সাত কো পাতাই করে হই লিয়া গাইতে নামিয়া লাইতে তে মুর কইছে তাওয়া মারছে সোয়ার মারছে গালো মারছে তিনজনা <laughs>
We're hearing sporadic gunshots. Um, we're being told not to enter uh, by both the police and military and by a local journalist we're working with because he's afraid that there's gonna be a lot more shots fired. Today is the last possible day. Uh, many assume that if there was gonna be a delay in the presidential elections, it would be announced. We're told by one of the police officers here that yesterday, uh, the intelligence agency um, raided the neighborhood and took away a protester. And right now the protesters are um, acting out their anger. Uh, he also told the local journalists we're working with that the protests are organized by white people and that if they saw us with the protesters, they would, quote, know what to do. So we're sort of at a loss right now for how much closer we can get and how we can proceed uh, while still staying safe. This is a photograph of Dambayev and one of his fellow soldiers. It's really hard to tell where the photograph was taken because there's nothing in the background. It looks like it's indoors or inside a vehicle. But lucky for us, the soldier who posted it didn't turn off his location settings. So when you click on the map, you can see exactly where he uploaded it from. When you zoom out, it's in the middle of a field not far from the Ukrainian border. And if you look at the photos that are geotagged to the same location, the photos nearby, you can see that there's still tons of Russian soldiers there taking selfies, posting them to the internet, and it's a pretty big encampment. Just a geotagged photo, we headed down a dirt road to see where it would lead us. So we followed the pin on the map out into the countryside, and we've already seen three really big army encampments with uh, hundreds of vehicles in them. You can really feel the military presence out here uh, near the border with Ukraine. The Russian military on an official level says that the reason they're out here across the region is for military drills. But these drills have been going on for a year now. So you've got to wonder what they're really here for. One of the photographs on Bateau's profile is different from the rest. In it, he's wearing a uniform unlike the ones in any of his other posts. Doesn't have insignia. He's wearing a white armband, and he appears to be standing in a battlefield. This photograph was posted in February, around the time of the battles for Debaltseva. So we headed to Ukraine to see if we could find the place it was taken. Well, that kind of looks like it, a little bit. This is the exact spot where an ethnic Asian-looking soldier had his selfie taken in mid-February. He then put that photograph up on a Russian social networking site. And that's why we know that he's a serving officer in the Russian Federation's army, because older posts on his profile page show him photographed back home in Russia at his military base. The shelling is so close and constant here in Pisky. You can hear the shell or the missile flying through the air. 
that doesn't seem to bother the soldiers here. They're so used to the, the shelling, they've been here so long, that they, doesn't even, they don't even flinch when it comes near. They only seem to move when they, uh, when they can tell it's actually going to drop real close. They have to run across the main road. There's the snipers, just like that. <laughs> The level of destruction here in Piski is absolutely insane. Almost resembles somewhere in Syria. But this is a village in Europe that's been devastated by a conflict that's dangerously spiraling out of control. Why do you think that they want to capture this city? I think Putin here now, this in his mind, became a... Fuck! What is this? All okay, all okay. What was this? Never mind. From what? A gun? An automatic, yes. They just accidentally fired a bullet and uh, made quite a big hole in the asphalt. That was fucking scary. We're in the area of the airport, uh, which the rebels recently won from the Ukrainians, and now they're cleaning up the area, gathering dead bodies, and they've put us on this armored vehicle to take us into the airport terminal. So these men down here, they're actually Ukrainian uh, prisoners of war. Some of them were serving in the airport before it was taken by the pro-Russia forces. Now they're being used as labor for the pro-Russia side, clearing away the rubble here in the airport and trying to access some of the bodies that are beneath all of the concrete slabs that became broken down during the fighting. Убитые, которые погибли под час во время взрыва. А вы в этом участвуете тоже как спасатель или? Нет, мы как военнопленные здесь достаем. А, ясно. А давно вы тут работаете? Перемирие началось. Так я С момента перемирия. А вы служили здесь до того, как стали пленными? Ну, некоторые из этих людей, да, были здесь. Взяли их в аэропорту. Попали в плен в аэропорту. Ну, не вы. Мы возле аэропорта, мы ехали, мы ехали на эвакуацию раненых. А вам говорили, вас будут обменивать или нет? Нет, у нас никакой информации нет. Torres made headlines in 2011 when an attacker shot her in the chest as she was closing up shop at her beauty parlor one night. She was packing heat and retaliated by shooting her attacker in the balls. Now she's become the face of armed women defending themselves, inspiring more and more women to grab a gun for protection. So Wanda, tell me your story. Me dispongo a cerrar el salón cuando cierro la primera puerta. Siento que un auto se detiene bruscamente. Yo lo que hago bajo del escalón, al bajar del escalón, él me pone el mal de fuego en el pecho. Y si me dio la palabra, me dispara. En ese momento yo sentí miedo, sentí temor por mi vida y a la misma vez sentí un coraje. Lo que hago es saco mi alma de fuego, llevo mi mano en el pecho y empiezo a dispararle. Por eso fue que le disparé en esta área. Al yo darle otra detonación, le di dos más y él sale corriendo. Mi cuerpo siente que quiere desvanecerse y yo no lo dejaba. Yo decía, tú no te vas a desvanecer, tú no te vas a caer. Llamo a mi esposo y le digo, vinieron a asaltar, estoy herida. Ahí enganchamos el teléfono. Cuando yo siento que me sale un buche de sangre en la boca, me dio miedo, le digo, Dios, no deje que en este momento yo muera. No deje que yo muera por mano de este, de este criminal. 
pulmón estaba colapsado, el plomo me llevó tres costillas. Cuando llego al centro médico, el médico me chequea y me dice, Wanda, te me estás yendo. De momento, yo siento que llega una camilla y una persona que está gritando, un muchacho, grita y grita y grita. Yo digo, doctor, ven acá. Y me dice, ¿qué pasó? Y yo le digo, a mí esto fue en Cagua. Este, la persona que yo le disparé fue en esta área. Dime que ese que está ahí gritando no es él, porque yo siento que él. Cuando va y verifica el frente, era él. Y ahí él fue preso por 15 años. Me paré de frente y le dije a las mujeres, tenemos el derecho constitucional de tener licencia y portar armas de fuego en forma legal. Álmese, defiéndase en su vida. Porque también tenemos el derecho a tener vida. Que no le dejen todas las responsabilidades a la policía, que la policía realmente no puede. Si yo no tengo a mi pistola en mi cintura y mi licencia, hoy yo no estuviese aquí. The truck is full and they're telling us we can leave. So, hola. Ya tengo más de 20 años viendo aquí en Isla del Bosque. Ah, tú vives de acá? ¿Eres de acá? Sí. Mi mamá falleció aquí y aquí me, aquí me quedé. Pero mi mamá era de Durango. ¿De Durango? Sí. ¿Y hay gente de, de todas partes de aquí? ¿De Guerrero sí, y así? Sí, de muchas partes. Sí. sí. De muchas partes vienen a trabajar. Today we're going from the town, um, 20 minutes away, there's a field. Uh, most people we've talked to, crazily enough, no, don't even know where they're going or what they're going to pick up, uh, what product. It's just sort of day by day. It's really a dilemma because what some of these women, the mothers, were telling me is that they don't see this as child labor at all. They just, they just say that they don't have anywhere else to leave their kids. So they come with and they help out. And uh, for them, this is something that they've always done ge for generations and they see it as something quite normal. This is the starting line for a day of work in 100 degrees heat. And they'll be paid according to the amount of chili peppers collected. Él no le gusta la escuela, pues desde chiquito se salía. De la Junto para mi pasaje y me vengo. Ya, ahí está, o sea, para qué. Y me vengo a trabajar. Sí, me da coraje. Que nomás estén hablando los maestros, me escapaba, voy al baño y me escapaba. Dejaba la mochila en el salón. ¿Qué te quieres comprar, sí? Un carro. <risa> ¿Qué carro quieres? Un ¿De Mustang. ¿Un Mustang? ¿Y para eso estás trabajando? ¿Y cuántas cubetas tienes que hacer para comprarte un Mustang? No, pues ni lo que me paguen tengo que ahorrar. ¿Y estás ahorrando? Sí. Wow. ¿Cuánto has ahorrado? <risa> Mucho, ya, ya lo presté ya. ¿Lo prestó? Ya pero no me no, quedan 21. ¿Y cómo lo prestas si tenías que ir a ahorrarlo? ¿Y ¿Por qué lo prestaste? Me lo pidieron prestado. ¿Quién? Él y mi mamá. Cobre el interés, cobre el interés. This is the opening of the tunnel from which authorities say Joaquin El Chapo Guzman managed to escape from the Altiplano Federal Prison on July 11th. This tunnel connects to the prison, which is about a mile from here. Authorities told us that we would be entering the tunnel at our own risk, as it was not reinforced all the way through. They also would not allow us to film farther into the tunnel in order to confirm that it connects with the shower stall one mile away. Well, we're going to get a first-hand look at the kind of tunnel that uh, the Sinaloa cartel has become famous for uh, constructing in their efforts to traffic drugs across the border. So I think it's safe to assume that this is the sort of tunnels that they use to um, cross drugs into the United States. This is sort of the lobby, if you will, uh, to the tunnel. Uh, the dirt that we were just standing on is right above uh, these wooden planks. So clearly you can see that this is a well-constructed uh, facility, essentially. There's a generator here uh, beside me, and the actual tunnel down to the length, the mile-long length tunnel, is, is right here. This is the last question. Right. Our number one question 
from everyone on the internet yeah. was, and this might seem flippant, but with war on drugs, with too many people in yeah. prisons, like we said, hurting education, right. states are legalizing marijuana for young people. I'm sorry, but if you legalized marijuana, it would be the biggest part of your legacy. So what are your yeah. thoughts on that? Well, first of all, it shouldn't be young people's biggest priority. Right. Uh, the, it, was our, uh, I, it, was our, it was our most popular. Well, I understand, because yeah. because sometimes on the, the White House uh, website and petitions, uh, you know, uh, we get the same. So let's put it in perspective. Young people, uh, yeah, I understand uh, this is important to you, but yeah, you should be thinking about climate change, right. the economy, jobs, war and peace. Maybe way at the bottom you should be thinking about mm. uh, uh, marijuana. I, I'd separate out the issue of the criminalization of marijuana from encouraging its use. I think there is no doubt that our criminal justice system generally is so heavily skewed towards cracking down on nonviolent drug offenders mm -hmm. that it has not just had a, a terrible effect on uh, many communities, particularly communities of color, rendering a lot of folks unemployable because they got felony records disproportionate prison sentences. It costs a huge amount of money to states, and a lot of states are starting to figure that out. Mississippi is a state of 2.9 million people. To be fair, there are really only about 150 people at this rally, and contrary to a lot of clickbait videos online or screaming on TV, there's very little vitriol here. I mean, yeah, there are guns and a presence from the Mississippi militia and a sweet-ass Dukes of Hazard car, but walking around, we're being welcomed by everyone. They're eager to share their perspective on the flag, on Civil War history, and what it means to them. This really doesn't feel like the yelling and screaming you see on TV. Oh, and I got like 10 invitations to dinner at people's homes. Southern hospitality, man. We unfortunately don't have time to visit all these families, so we're taking Brandy, Jason, and rally organizer Kelly up on their offer to grab some legit barbecue down in Biloxi. I've put on at least five or six pounds just in the month. Now you know been... why Southerners have an obesity problem. <laughs> Over ribs and chicken, and pork and brisket and sausage, we talked about what the flag, oh, and cornbread and beans, we talked about what the flag means to them and why they feel so misunderstood. People that think that it was about slavery need a history lesson. Oh, I get so mad because it's my, it's my heritage. You know, I mean, I've got, I've got relatives that fought in the Civil War. They were dirt poor yeah. farmers, okay? They didn't, have, they didn't own any slaves. They tell me they're outraged by the crazy South Carolina shooter who draped himself in the Confederate flag and say it's not a symbol of white supremacy, but of Southern heritage and pride. The whack job that did that, if any of us could probably get our hands on him, there's no telling. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't want to get him in a, in a room with us. Talking about I the, know, sh the shooter? I know yeah, it would be you know, he's gone or whatever, you know, but, like, because it's people like that that give us a bad rep. We're the silent majority. We, we, we're peaceful people. The media kind of focuses on the slavery aspect. What are the other things that are that are so compelling well, that aren't being told? The South was devastated after the Civil War. They had to start all over. And they did it black and white together. Mm -hmm. Not slave and math or anything like that. Together. And that part of it's not told. What do you say to folks who have been descendants of slaves, and for them, they feel like, obviously, that's a big issue in their family. So how do you explain to them why you want to keep the flag? If for them, that's their big issue, and for you, you're saying, understandably, it's, it's the sacrifice your family well, made Well, they were black Confederate soldiers. Sure. That I, that's my next question the, for you. After, they, yeah. That fought in the, not forced. Yeah. They fought freely next to white people in the Confederate Army. We just ran into Kevin, who is the guy who shot the video of Freddie Gray getting detained and arrested and Come thrown on, into Biscuit, the van. Up. He was arrested last night uh, because he was out after curfew. According to the police, he says he wasn't out after curfew. Yeah. And he is going to celebrate at North and Penn, so we're going to follow him and see what they're about to do. We going up, fellas, come on! I shot that video yes, not knowing whether we were going to get justice. And we fought, man, we fought hard. For everybody that was here positively, for me and my man Freddie, fighting for this cause, I feel like you guys 
deserve the most respect, man, because without you guys, this this wouldn't have been taken to worldwide. Listen, you, a lot of people are calling you a hero because, you know, you were the one who shot the video, right? I mean, thanks to that video, I guess, people knew that something happened that wasn't normal, that was, how do you feel? Get it close, dog. Get it close, G. I ain't afraid of tears, man. I'm, these are tears of joy. You understand what I'm talking about? I'm happy my man Freddie can get peace. After this, people will really start to respect us in the police force. Kevin, do you think the cops now, because of this verdict, do you think they'll like think twice now about you know, how they arrest people. Do you think it will change them at all? Think twice, they might want to think three more times after that. So you, you think it will change? Yeah. Man, look, it ain't got no choice but to change, baby. It ain't got no choice but to change. Either we gonna keep on going, and we gonna keep on fighting for these protests, and we gonna keep on getting on their nerves, or they just gonna give it the justice that we deserve. Yeah! Yeah! Black power! Yeah! Yeah! Justice for my man, Freddie G, boys. You heard me. All FGM or cutting or female circumcision, whatever, you know, one prefers to call it. I mean, it's something that has been going on for thousands of years. And I think it survived for so long because the fact that it's taboo to talk about it. I believe that if women become comfortable talking about their experience. That's the only way we can stop this. So I have some forms I'll need you to sign on this computer. Anesthesia consent, so consulting to general anesthesia today. So is that a tough one? Yeah, it is. Anesthesia. It's the hardest one. When you get back there. Okay, you're all set. They just called Diane in to get ready for her surgery. And right now she's in the waiting room. I guess it also serves as the recovery room, so we're gonna talk to her and see how she's feeling. I'm excited that I'm doing this, but I'm also extremely nervous. I'm not doing this just for myself. I feel like I'm doing this for other women who went through the same thing. Okay, so we're all masked up, we got our gloves on, had pieces on, and we just entered the treatment area where the annual checkups take place. So this is not a testing lab. No, this it's not a testing lab. We check the animals for their, uh, it's a health screening. Hey, Jochie. Hi. Heb jij al grote panden gekregen? Nee, hè? Nee. Nog een jaartje wachten. We take a small hair sample, and with that hair sample, we can measure cortisol levels. And cortisol is a measure for stress. 
I was wondering, can they hear us right now? No, I don't think that they, they can hear us. Yeah, the, blinking. Uh, yeah, because he's he's anesthetized, yeah. but yeah, uh, he's not unconscious. No. They all get a tattoo. So from a short distance, this is a way to identify the animal. It looks so easy and so painless, but then you forget that this monkey is highly sedated on ketamine. So do they get names as well as numbers? Yes, this is the name, Hysop. Hysop. So this is Hysop 11118, done with tattooing. Yes, give him some. Why do you do it in the eyelid? And then we can see it when you do it on the, the skin here. Then it is walking in the cage that is uh, different to see it than you do in the eye. Do you find it scary at all to inject in an eyelid? Uh, it's always scary. هذا هداء انت 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 هارك هداء نستعمل الاولاد بيلموا ده مرات بيجيبوا من برا بنحطهم بالصبيه هي مو امنه بس ما في حطا منين نجيب حطا يعني حق الكيس 5000 يعني بس غصبا عنا عم نحط صبابيك هو اي صاب معها رب والبنت هي كمان عم بيحطوا كمان صبابيك بالصبيه it's hard to imagine people living in camps like this across Lebanon indefinitely. But at the moment, there's no foreseeable solution. So according to the, the fighters here, ISIS are you know, only a couple of hundred meters away, and this position here comes under attack every day. ISIS try and move through the palm groves to attack the trenches and the buildings here, but also attack them with mortars. The Majahir fighters sing to Imam Abbas and Hussein, the, uh, the main figures in the Shia religion. I guess as a way to uh, essentially troll ISIS. The fighters here saying ISIS are only 100 meters away. These guys are also using uh, heavy machine gun dushkas and RPGs against ISIS positions. This is literally the very front line in the global fight against the Islamic State. Nice operation at the YPG. They've come up here. We've been here all evening uh, since the sun went down. They're providing covering fire for a YPG assault on the other side of the ISIS positions on the other side of the city. 
airstrike there. The coalition have been flying overhead all night, bombing ISIS pretty heavily. Uh, that's probably like the 12th, 13th airstrike we've heard since we've been here. We've been here a few hours. Every time ISIS fire back with uh, tracer rounds, machine gun rounds, the guys here get on the Dushka truck and just blast away at them, like suppress them, so the YPG can advance from other other fronts and essentially remove ISIS from the city. We've been here a few hours now, the YPG fighters we were with. We've been providing fire support as other YPG fighters uh, push into an ISIS held district. You see ISIS tracer fires, they fire back. Um, we're being pulled back now. We've been told that the YPG advanced, they've captured the school and the streets. And ISIS is the heaviest change of fire going on now. Um, they're telling us to leave. ساعاتي كانت بسوريا تركتها وخرجت لاجل انه نعيش حالنا ونكون حالنا مستقبلا بظن انه ما في هيك فرق يعني بين الواحد هربان من قذيفه هاون تموتوا او هربان من لقمه خبز كمان يموت من جوا يعني كشباب يعني مثل عمري انه بيسحبوهم على الجيش بيحاربوا فالموضوع انا يعني مو داخل فكري ابدا ما بدي قاتل وما بدي ادخل بهالامور هاي كلها يعني فكره اوروبا ما كانت بالبال بس للاسف الظروف انه هي اللي خلتنا آه نفكر بالطلع هذه العيشه في قازاخستان غوانتانامو الثاني سيغان غوانتانامو جست مينيتس افتر وي ارايفد Members of the Red Crescent stopped by unannounced. This is Alfia Meshina, the director of the Red Crescent in Seme. She rents this apartment for Lutfi with money from the ICRC, and both she and local police have copies of the keys. We went to meet with Lutfi with the impression that he's a free man, but it was clear we weren't welcome. Yes, so basically what's happened is, is she says we don't have the right to meet him. And she said he's not a private citizen, he doesn't have any rights, he doesn't have any paperwork, and he's part of our uh, aid project, and therefore it's up to us to decide who sees him. Which I think is very descriptive of the kind of situation they've been placed here in Kazakhstan. You know, they've been released from prison in Guantanamo on the one hand, but they've been transferred here without any rights whatsoever, yet they haven't been charged with any crime. Um, they haven't been proven guilty of any crime. And uh, there's people here who seem to think that, you know, they can filter who's actually able to gain access and speak to him. The police just showed up and said, you've called the police. And she said, oh, no, it wasn't me, but uh, I'm glad you're here. She called. 
Он хочет знать, почему вы берете эту информацию. Вы иностранные граждане. Цель пребывания вашей должности. Говорит, что он его клиент. They kept hounding us for the next 20 minutes, demanding that we leave Lutfi's apartment. Сошлитесь на хотя бы один закон Казахстанской Республики о том, что человек должен у кого-то спрашивать разрешение, чтобы встретиться с кем-то. Давайте сделаем так. Давайте до абсурда делаем. Давайте завтра в офисе красного полумесяца мы встретимся и переговорим. Мы за. Хорошо. Давайте на завтра. Хорошо. Все. Все. Okay. Everybody's smiling. Everybody wants everybody to leave. Пока, пока. У нас все в порядке, вы за наш вот. счет не беспокойтесь. Нет, просто... Слушайте, мы зло... взрослые люди. I'm just checking to see if anybody's following us. We've only just arrived in Kazakhstan literally a matter of hours ago, and it seems like half the city's police force is already trying to figure out what we're up to. Okay, it's five in the morning. Today is the most significant day so far in the campaign against Boko Haram. This morning starts the invasion of Bama. So I'm going to be in one of the attack helicopters, the MI-24. Um, that's going to commence the attack, after which the ground forces are going to move in and attempt to rout Boko Haram from the city of Bama. The private military contractors provided technical advice to the 72nd Mobile Strike Force. In addition, they provided a fully operational air wing. We were able to accompany the air wing for the first part of the assault on Bama. The Mi-24 Hind attack helicopter is basically a flying tank. It was built by the Russians during the Cold War and can fire up to 4,000 rounds a minute. It's truly a devastating piece of military hardware and a game changer for the Nigerian army. After two hours, the helicopter assault team returned to base. The ground forces would move in. I waited on the tarmac for reports from the ground forces. There is no more to negotiate. Enough. We try to de-radicalize. We try all these things, but when you try to de-radicalize one, there is another one, there was another one coming. I told you what is the solution. Let's take some plane, Air France. We put all of them for Syria. Just before they go to Syria, we take the passport. Ils sont dans la merde, ils sont complètement foutus, évidemment, ils sont en danger. Mais ça se surveille, tu peux pas les jeter comme, comme, je sais pas, comme la poubelle, quoi. Bien sûr, tu peux. Non. Thank you. 